Blessings family. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Welcome to Transformation Community Church, led by Pastor Jason L. Flowers in the amazing city of Surprise, Arizona. Our mission is to transform the lives of people through the Word of God and the love of Christ. Thank you for choosing TCC. We demonstrate our love for God by loving His people through prayer, service, and discipleship. We pray that your heart will be transformed by the message today. Don't forget to share with us as the Holy Spirit moves through you and speaks to your mind and soul. We encourage you to share today's message with everyone you know. We're on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at TCC Arizona. So you don't miss out, please remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the bell and selecting all to be included on upcoming broadcasts. Now, let us usher the Lord into our service with a powerful prayer unto the Lord. Hello, everyone. Let's bow our heads in prayer before the word is brought forth and bring the Holy Spirit in the midst. And we just want to praise and thank you, Lord. Father God, we come to you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We are praying for our country. We pray for protection from the division and challenges that we are seeing. Your word tells us in 1 Timothy 2 that you urge us, first of all, that petitions and prayers and intercession and thanksgiving be made for all people. So we pray right now for those in authority here in America and around the world. Lord God, we ask you to guide us, Holy Spirit, uh, pray through us so that we may pray in unity according to your will. Romans 8, 26 tells us in the same way you, Holy Spirit, helps us in our weakness because we don't know what to pray. So we must come to you first, Holy Spirit. We ask you, Lord, to forgive us. Forgive us of our prideful when we're wise in our own eyes and have forsaken your word for our own desires. Proverbs told us that there is a way that appears to be right, but in the end it ends in death. Please search our heart, Lord God. Reveal to us what is not of you. Purify us as we seek your will and your intercession. Psalms 139 reminds us, search me, O God, know my heart, test me, and know my anxious thoughts. See if there's any offensive way in me and lead me to the way of everlasting. Lord God, forgive us of our sins. Grant us wisdom in how to walk before you in these trying times. May our prayers be in alignment with your will, and may you hear them. We ask you, Father God, to redeem the situation that is going on in Russia and Ukraine. Let the Rus Russian people in Ukraine discover that Jesus is the true source of peace, safety, comfort, and truth and freedom. We pray that the Ukrainians will, not, will have their hope in you, and not in the government, in elections, diplomacy, but in Jesus Christ. We ask you, Father, to deliver Ukraine from evil. May we have mercy and may you have mercy and heal their land. May you give the Ukraine people peace and the chance to develop a nation that values truth, justice, freedom, all rooted in your goodness, God. We pray for the culture which political disagreement leads to the hatred and violence. We pray for the various world leaders in, in, that's involved in diplomacy with Ukraine and uh, Russia. We pray that the evangelical church will remain united, even in the face of difficulty and questions. Lord God, we know as they cry out to you and us, around, other believers around the nation is crying out to you that we believe our prayers will be answered. We pray for Israel. You are our rock, Lord God, and our Redeemer. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We are sad to see and hear of the violence and the suffering that's going through with the men, women, and children when they are injured um, during this conflict. We pray for justice, your sovereignty, and your righteousness, Lord God. And at the same time, we pray for mercy for everyone involved. We pray for the government and the people the militants, as well as the terrorists, Lord. We ask that your kingdom come and you, and you rule over the land. 
Shield the people of Israel, Lord God. Protect the soldiers, the civilians from bloodshed. May your truth and your light shine in the midst of darkness. Where there is hatred, may your love prevail. Help the Christians to support one another, Lord. Bring your salvation to Israel. Let them draw near to your heart, Lord, because they need you in this time, Father God. And we just thank you. Thank you, Lord God. Father God, we come to you also today for protection of our families. Let no trouble fall on them today. Keep them away from accidents. We al allow no evil to influence their hearts. Cover them with your precious blood of Jesus Christ. Take charge over them so that they will not strike their foot against the stone. Guide our way, Lord God, with our family and our lives. Be our shield as we go back home when we're traveling. May you always preserve the bond that we have as a family. And may we look forward to seeing each other when we get home. Guard our home as well, as well Lord God. Let no harm will fall upon it. May it continue to be the sanctuary of blessing, comfort, and love for each other. Let us always be at restful place. Let it always be a restful place for us and for our family. Continue to protect us, Lord, as we rest at night. Allow no intruders or calamities to disturb our home. We trust you. We trust in your mighty power to keep us and our family safe from any harm or evil. We commit our families to you. Those who are, have been sick, we believe that you are the healer and the great physician. May you be the comfort to those families who have members who are physically in pain right now. Touch them with your healing power, Lord God. Send forth your word and heal those diseases. Let your healing power flow through every cell of their bodies. We ask you that you heal the members of our family that are also hurting emotionally. The affliction is not physical, but we know they are in pain. Give them comfort as well, Lord God. Give them peace that transcends understanding. Heal their hearts. Lord, you, you may be, you, they may be filled with anger, hatred, strife, and unforgiveness. We ask that you heal them. Clear their minds of any doubts, or anxiety, or depression. Renew in them a peaceful spirit. We pray also that you restore the bonds, bonds that have been broken in some of our family members. We know, God, that there is nothing you won't, you, won't, you won't do, and we know that feuding relatives must come together. Lord, we cannot do this on our own. We ask you, Holy Spirit, to surround our family and our friends with your love. May we be filled to the brim with that love, that it may overflow and we're able to share this with our families. Allow us to be the instruments of your blessing, dear God. Lord, you are our ultimate strength. When we are weak, you are strong. You lift us up when we are down. You renew our strength and we soar like wing wings. We soar on wings like eagles. Thank you, God, for always raising us up with a mighty hand. We thank you for the strong bonds with our families and that we depend only on you. This is why we must ask that you be the center of our family relationships. Enable our families to be a triple braided cord that cannot be easily broken. Let your spirit fill our hearts so that we can love each other just as Christ loved us. In our times of trials and trouble, God, we look to you. Life can be hard at times and difficult and with difficult challenges. But you, Father God, we believe that nothing is impossible. We believe you will always grant the endurance to overcome any obstacle that may come in our way. You are our strength and we are when we are weak and you always we're always grateful, Father God, when you're in the midst because your power comes through our lives. We thank you, Father God, for renewing our minds and our hearts. Thank you for sending the Holy Spirit to us to, ex to express that love to our families. We admit, Father God, that we are, we, want, we are lovers of peace, and that's what you want us to be. 
There are times in our families, Lord, that there is fighting and bickering. And there are times that we let anger, strife and bitterness rule our hearts. We ask you that you forgive us uh, and forgive us of our sins against our own families. Change our heart and make them truly love one another. We extend the same forgiveness that you give to us, to our family members whom are hurting. Humble us, Lord, that we may seek forgiveness without pride. We ask you to heal the wounds in the hearts of ourselves as well as the family members. Touch our hearts that we may accept in your forgiveness. We are very thankful, God, for the good times we have with our families. Thank you for giving us time to spend with each other. Preserve the good relationships. Whenever we are with our beloved families, let there be peace reign in the home. Let, com let us have compassion for each other. Teach us what it is to have real joy and able to share that with our family members. Lord, you are the Prince of Peace, the one who guards our hearts. May you always remind us to be peacemakers, especially with our families. Protect us from hateful thoughts and let us not be the reason for causing chaos in our homes. Guide us each day as we walk through this life with our families, whenever each of us may be. Lord God, you are a wonderful God and a merciful God. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We know we need you. Our world needs you, Father God. Let us not forget that we can do nothing except you orchestrate it, you okay it, and everything that's happening around us, Father God, we must trust you and believe you that it all will work out for our good. So, Father God, we come to you with open arms. We come to you humble. We come to you seeking your face and turning from our wickedness so that not only our land is healed, but our families are healed. And we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, prepare your hearts and minds to receive a powerful word from God. Please open your Bibles and follow along as Pastor Flowers teaches and preaches with precision and clarity a word from the Lord. Good morning and good morning and welcome to Transformation Community Church. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. My name is Jason Flowers and I'm the pastor here at TCC where our vision is to transform the lives of people through the word of God and the love of Christ everywhere. Amen and hallelujah. Glory to God. So again, family, we've been in this series titled Show Me the Love, uh, entire month of February. This is the last Sunday in February. So we're going to conclude that series on today. But it's been an awesome series, been getting a lot of great feedback, a lot of great comments on just how important and how much this teaching on love has been for uh, everyone that's been listening and watching. Amen and hallelujah. So we're going to continue with that on today. And this on today, we're just going to take a look at how to love yourself. Uh, previously, we looked at uh, how to love God and we looked at how to love others. And today uh, it's going to be important that we understand how to love ourselves. So before we get into the word, a couple of announcements. One is now is the time to reach out to your family and friends. I know some of you are here in the sanctuary uh, and some people are missing. And then there are some uh, of you that are at home. Now is the time to just reach out to your family and friends. Let them know that TCC is on. Uh, they can reach us on uh, YouTube and on Facebook. It's at TCC Arizona. Now is the time for you to reach out to them and just share and let them know that TCC is on. It's going to be a great message directly and specifically for them on how to love yourself. Amen and hallelujah. And then uh, the other thing is today is uh, new member recognition day. And we have quite a few uh, new members that we're going to recognize on the day. The Lord has been blessing us here at TCC. We've been growing vertically and horizontally each and every week. And I just thank the Lord for his exponential growth, his supernatural growth and prosperity. Amen and hallelujah. So before we get into the word, uh, let us pray. Dear Father, we thank you. We love you. We honor you. You're a great God. You're an awesome God. You're a mighty God. And we just thank you for the rising of the sun and the going down of the same. We just thank you for you being you all by yourself. We just thank you for your presence in our lives. We thank you for what you've done for us yesterday. 
what you're doing for us today and the promises you have for us on tomorrow. Dear Father, in the name of Jesus and the power of your blood, I ask that you hide me behind the cross, that the word that goes forth will be edifying into the souls of your people, that they will hear and see more of you and less of me. In the name of Jesus and the power of your blood, we just ask that the word that goes forth will fall on ears that are ready to hear it in a heart that is open to receive it. And in the name of Jesus and the power of your blood, we're going to ask that we make the devil our footstool on today, that there will be no hindrances, no boundaries, no walls that will separate your word from your people. And in the name of Jesus and the power of your blood, we forever give you all the praise, glory and honor for you are worthy to be praised. Amen and hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Family, we've been in this series uh, looking at love and we're going to I'll be right here in this. And, and today we're going to talk about loving yourself. Amen. And hallelujah. So the title of this sermon is I love me some me. Come on now. Give it up for the Lord. The title of this is I love me some me. And I'll give you an illustration to get this thing started. In a few years back, uh, there was this football player. His name was Terrell Owens. Uh, they called him T.O. And there was a time uh, where he was just working out and had a lot of cameras, a lot of people standing around him and they were interviewing him and he was continuing to work out. I believe he was in his driveway doing these sit-ups and he was getting them sit-ups in and they were asking him a bunch of questions. It was a time he was, a, you know, he was a tumultuous player. He, he was, had a lot of controversy and conflict around him. And so they wanted to get a word from T.O. T.O., what are you doing? T.O., how you, how you feeling? And, and all T.O. had to say to them was, I love me some me. And that stuck in my mind. And I'm like, man, if we only as as God's children can pick up on what that is really meaning is I love me some me. So, of course, we know what scripture says. Amen. And hallelujah. And so we're going to be right here in Matthew 22, 37 through 39. And I'm in the NLT version. Amen. And hallelujah. And this is what scripture says. This is what scripture says. It says Jesus replied. You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. That's number one, y'all. And then it says, and a second is equally important. And it is love your neighbor as yourself. And that's what we're going to talk about. Love your neighbor as yourself. Then that's a condition there um, because you have to love yourself in order for you to love your neighbor. You have to love yourself. Amen. And hallelujah. I hope you all picking up what I'm putting down right there. You have to love you in order to love your neighbor. That's what the word is saying. Amen. So I want to begin with two thought provoking questions. Just two. The first one is, do you love yourself? Think about it. I want you to really think about it and search your innermost soul and say and answer that question. Do you love yourself? You think about all the things that you've gone through in life, where you are today and some things that have come your way, whether uh, foreseen or unforeseen, whether it's been you that made a choice or decision or something has just fallen on your lap and it's made you feel some type of way. Amen and hallelujah. So think about it. Do you love yourself? And the second question I have for you, family, is should you love yourself? That's two different things. The first one is, do you love yourself? And the second one is, should you love yourself? Amen. And, how, and that's more of an introspective look to say, how should I feel about myself? How should I look at me each and every day when I wake up in the mirror? Amen and hallelujah. How should I go about my day and how my self image and, and the things that are going on in my mind and the things that I am exuding unto others? And should you love yourself? Amen and hallelujah. Help me somebody. I want for us today to learn that the decision to love and demonstrate the action of love must be first applied to ourself. We have to apply it to ourself before we can love anyone else. You all picking up what I'm putting down? So before we can effectively apply love to anyone else, before we can, can have this agape love that we're reaching to have uh, for anyone else, we first got to have agape love for ourselves. Amen and hallelujah. So for an example, uh, when you're on an airplane, think about we on an airplane and I, I travel often uh, from uh, every week, just about going from one place to another. And, and when you're on an airplane and you're sitting in your seat before you even leave, before you even take off, 
the, uh, the airline steward, stewardess or the airline uh, steward, they come up and they, and they give this announcement and they say, hey, in the case of an emergency, your airbag is going to drop down. And what I want you to do first is put your airbag on so that you can receive oxygen. And then after you put your airbag on and you're doing fine, then I want you to put that airbag or put that, that mask on someone else so that they can receive oxygen. So you got to pick up what I'm putting down there. And what I'm saying to you is the instructions are clear. It says, hey, put on your mask first. And then once you're okay, then you put on, give that mask and you go help someone else. All I'm saying here, family, and that's a great illustration. All I'm saying here, family, is you got to love you first. And, and, and once you start loving you, then you can go love somebody else better. Y'all better come get me today. I'm on one today. Y'all better come get me today. Glory to God. Put yours on first. Love you first. Love you to the best of your ability. Love, have agape love for you. And once you establish that agape love for you, then you go, then it makes you better equipped to go have that agape love for someone else. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So you all ready for this? You ready? Let's go. So let's look again at Jesus' answer to the question, which is the most important commandment? Jesus' answer was this. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. And this is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is, is like it. It says, love your neighbor as yourself. In that answer, we see that Jesus has given us two great love commandments that summarize our prime responsibility to our creator and to fellow humans. It says, love God. So we absolutely got to have uh, love God before we can do anything else. Even before we can love ourselves, y'all, we got to love God. That's first and foremost, the most important thing that we have to do each and every day is love God. And we talked about that a couple of weeks ago. Amen. And then we have to love people. Amen. We have to love people. Now, notice that each law was given with a qualifier to help us know how to love God and love others. So the first one says we are to love God. And that's that's the commandment. We are to love God. And then the qualifier is you got to do it with all your heart, soul and mind. In order for you to love God is that equal and reciprocal. You want to give him 100 percent of you. He's giving you 100 percent of him. He wants 100 percent of you is equal love, 100 percent, 100 percent. And it's reciprocal. He's giving it to you. You want to give it back to him. Glory to God. And you got to do that with all your heart, all your soul and all your mind. And then the next one, it says we are to love our neighbors as ourselves. So the commandment is love our neighbors. And here's the condition. We got to love them as we love ourselves. That's huge. That's important. That's important to understand. We got to love them as we love ourselves. And this is what Paul says. So what does it mean for us to love your neighbor as yourself? What does it mean by that? Paul's words in Ephesians 5 and 28 parallel Jesus command. And just to let you know, pastor does his homework. Pastor's been studying. And this is a parallel scripture. This is a, a, a scripture that goes right along with love your Love your neighbor as you love yourself. So pick up, pick this up. And this is in Ephesians 5 and 28. It says husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. So there's the command. The command is husbands are to love their wives. And how should you love them as your own bodies? The scripture goes on to say that you're not going to uh, us, the individual, you're not going to do harm to your body. You're not going to do bodily harm to yourself. You're not going to put yourself out or put your dis disposition yourself. So if that's not how you're going to treat yourself, then you can't treat your wife that way. Amen and hallelujah. And if you're going to love yourself, if you're going to love yourself to no end, then that's how you have to do your wife. So same thing here. You got to love yourself to no end. Agape love yourself. You got to agape love yourself. That is unconditional love for yourself. You got to have sacrificial love for yourself. Your love has to be pure for yourself and your love has to be perfect for yourself. You can't have no blemishes in the love for yourself. Amen and hallelujah. And then once you can do that for you, then you can love your neighbor. Come on now. I'm preaching today. I'm preaching today. Help me somebody. So here it is. We are called to love God and worship him. And we're also called to love our neighbors. And we strive and we work hard to do that every day. 
But what we never focus on is that we, too, are called to love ourselves. And a lot of you out there saying, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, Pastor Flowers. Wait a minute, Pastor Flowers. Uh, that's not biblical, is it? Uh, we're not supposed to love ourselves. Doesn't the Bible command us to deny ourselves and take up our cross? Didn't Jesus say that if I love my life, I will lose it? Isn't self-love right up there with pride and conceit? And shouldn't we avoid those things? And you're absolutely right. The word is clear. The word is, is, is inerrant. The word is, is infallible. The word is clear on how we are supposed to love. Amen and hallelujah. So I'm not talking about a self-centered love. When we're talking about love yourself, I'm not talking about a self-centered love like T.O. was having at that moment when he said, I love me some me. He was ha he had a self-centered love. I'm not talking about a self-centered love. I'm not talking about uh, a stuck up love. I'm not talking about a prideful love, a egotistical or a boastful love uh, or always complimenting yourself. That's not the kind of love I'm talking about, y'all, and, and because scripture is clear. Um, on being against that train of thought. And I'll give you some scriptures to go in line with that. So go with me to 2 Timothy 3, 1 and 2. And this is what it says there. It says, but mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy. That right there is a that's the wrong kind of love for oneself. Amen. Another one is in Proverbs 21 and four. It says haughty eyes, a proud heart and evil actions are sins. That's another scripture. I'm right there with you. I'm tracking with you when we're not supposed to love ourselves in a self-centered way. Scripture's right there with us. Amen and hallelujah. And that was Proverbs 21 and four. There's another one in Galatians six and three. It says this, if you think you are too important to help someone, you are only fooling yourself. You are not that important. And I love that scripture there because it said, hey, y'all, we're not that important. We're not that big. We're not bigger than, than this world. We're not bigger than others. We're not better than others. Uh, the Lord has no partiality. We're all equal in God's eyes. Amen and hallelujah. So quit fooling yourself thinking that you are so much better than everyone else. We all just one paycheck away. I hope you're picking up what I'm putting down. Y'all better come get me on that one. We all just one paycheck away. Help me somebody. And here's another one. Proverbs 27 and two. And it says this. Let someone else praise you, not your own mouth. A stranger, not your own lips. It means you don't don't talk. Don't be boastful and talk about the things that you've done and 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 how much education you may have or how much money you have or that's not what we're supposed to be doing, y'all. That's not what we're supposed to be doing. Let other people give you compliments. Let other people uh, speak of the goodness that you're doing in the lives of others. Amen. And how, and how you're furthering the kingdom. That's what it's all about, how you're furthering the kingdom. Amen and hallelujah. But if there is a command to love others as you love yourselves, you can't give what you don't have. You can't give what you don't have. For an example, and some of y'all going to understand what I'm saying on this one. Uh, and yeah, I, mean, I may have even been in this situation. So there's a time in my life where I was so poor, I couldn't pay attention. So poor, I couldn't pay attention. And these bill collectors are calling, y'all. These bill collectors are calling. They're looking for money. They're looking for a payment. They're like, hey, the, your electric bill is due, your, your gas bill is due, and, and you got things that are due. Amen. And I'm, I'm on the phone telling them, I'm like, uh, you can't, I can't give you some I don't have if I don't have money. I can't give you money. Amen and hallelujah. And that's the that's exactly what we're looking at now. If you don't have love, if you don't have love, you can't give love. You can't give something that you don't have. The same way them bill collectors was looking for payment, looking for money from me. And I'm sitting on the phone. I, I mean, I had a, a, a I wanted to, but I just didn't have it in me to give. You can't squeeze blood out of a turnip. I'm like, hey, I. Yeah, come on there. Y'all know, know some of y'all been there with me. Some of y'all been there with me. Amen and hallelujah. You can't give something you don't have. If you don't have love, you can't give nobody else love. So that's what we're working on today. We're working on you loving you so that you can love other people. Amen and hallelujah. Glory to God. There is a healthy, necessary place 
you need to have as a child of God. Understanding the reason behind why you should love yourself, because here's why you should love yourself, because you are made in the image in the likeness of God. That's strong and that's powerful and that's enough right there as to why you should love yourself. And I'm going to say it to you again because somebody need to pick up what I'm putting down on that one. Amen and hallelujah. It says because you are made in the image in the likeness of God and God don't make no mistakes. God don't make no mistakes. Amen and hallelujah. And, and I'm not simply referring to the shallow love only of simply thinking, uh, you know, you like the way you look, although you should. We all should like the way we look. We all should like every uh, curve on our body, every blemish that we may have. Every We all should love who we are and how God has made us. God does not make any mistakes. God made us the way he wanted us to be. You got to accept that. You got to believe that in your heart that the Lord made you and he does not make mistakes. And it says so right here in Psalms 139 and 14. It says, it says, I praise you because check this out, y'all. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. You are wonderful. You are enough. You are there. You are all of that in a bag of chips and don't let nobody else tell you nothing different. Glory to God. Y'all better come get me. It says, I know that full well. That's what the word says. It says, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know. Key thing is, I know that full. Well, you have to know that you're a child of God. You have to know that God loves you. You have to know that you were made by the one and only true God. And he does not make mistakes. Amen and hallelujah. Glory to God. So the start of loving yourself. And then moving to loving others has to begin with realizing the love of God, the love of God. Glory to God, the love of God. First John 4, 19 says this. We love him because he first loved us. We love him because he first loved us. It wasn't we did. We didn't make the first move, y'all. Hey, let's make sure we clear on that. We didn't make the first move. God made the first move. We love God because he first loved us. Romans eight, uh, Romans five and eight says it this. It says, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Check this out, y'all. When Christ was on the cross and and they put two nails in his in his in each hand and they put a, a nail in his in his feet and they put this thorny cross, uh, this thorny crown on his head. And then they came along and they pierced him in the side. Hey man, y'all tracking with me. Can you picture this on the canvas of your imagination? And there was Christ. He hadn't done anything but come to save the world. He hadn't done anything to deserve what he was getting. And here's Christ. He's dying on the cross. Uh, he had even prior to that, he was beaten. He was flogged. He was spat on and, and all he was talked about and all of these things uh, that Christ went through. And, and while he was going through all of that and while he was hanging there on the cross and they came in uh, uh, and they, they poked him in the side and, and he did all these things to him. When he was there, y'all, he had you in me in mind. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. Let's picture that on the canvas of your imagination. Christ had. You and me in mind when he was going through all of that that he went through. Amen and hallelujah. Glory to God. Somebody better come get me today because we talking about Jesus Christ. We talking about the love of Christ and how much he loves you and how much he loves me. Glory to God. Glory to God. And, and, and here's so. So the first thing we got to do is, you know, you got to love yourself. When you love yourself, then you are mirroring what God has for you. That means when you love yourself, there are some things that you should not walk in. And I'm going to say it again because I'm preaching to somebody today. I'm preaching to somebody. I'm touching somebody's heart today. And this is, this is what I'm saying. When you love yourself, then you are mirroring what God has for you. That means when you love yourself, there are some things that you should not walk in. And one of those things that you should not walk in is fear. Oh, there's so many people 
underneath the sound of my voice that are walking in fear. There's so many people that are not underneath the sound of my voice that are walking in fear. And we got to move away from walking in fear because when you walk in fear, you you missing out on your blessings. You're afraid of of stepping out there. You're afraid of doing what the Lord has asked you to do. You're afraid of being obedient for whatever reason. But while you're operating in this fear, you're not operating in faith and you're missing these doors that the Lord is just waiting to open for you. So we have to move away from fear, operate in faith and know that, baby, there's a door that Christ has waiting to open for you. There may be doors, plural. Once you get out there and get moving, you're going to find a lot of doors that are waiting just to be open for you by Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen and hallelujah. And John, first John 4, 16 and 18 puts it this way. It says, and we have known and believed the love of God, the love that God has for us. God is love and he who abides in love abides in God and God in him. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because he is. So are we in this world? There is no fear in love. Pick that up, y'all. Y'all understand that there's no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment. Fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. Amen. Amen. If I'm not afraid, I can go boldly to the throne room and find grace. If I'm not afraid, I can boldly go to the throne room and find grace. You say, what's this grace you're talking about, Pastor Flowers? What's this grace I hear about? Grace is God's unmerited favor. God's unmerited favor. And and grace is free and undeserved. You don't have to do anything to get it. One thing, I, I take it back, there's not by works. You can't get grace by works, but there's one thing you have to do, and that's just believe in Jesus Christ. Just as simple as that. Just believe in Jesus Christ. Grace is God's unmerited favor and grace is free and undeserved. And if we want to to walk in in faith, if we want to walk in love and move away from fear, just know that when Christ died on the cross, we we were we're walking in grace. We're no longer under the law of condemnation. We are now under the law of grace. Amen. And hallelujah. And grace is love. Y'all grace is Christ's love for us. Thank you, Lord, for your grace. Thank you, Lord, for dying on the cross so that we can have life and have it more. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. If I'm at a starting place that I am loved by God, then I do not have to be in torment. If if I'm in a place where I know and I feel that I'm loved by God, then I don't have to be in torment. And that's important for us to understand. We don't have to be in torment. Here's the things that torment us. Here's some of the things that torment us. Low self-esteem. Low self-esteem is one of the things that torment us. Uh, But God deals with that one in in the illustration with Moses. You all remember Moses and and Moses states, hey, I can't be what you call me to be because Moses had this 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 stuttering problem. He had a speech impediment. And also Moses, you all know Moses, he killed someone back in Egypt, right, man? So he, Moses killed someone. And so Moses had this, this feeling about himself. He felt some type of way about himself. One, because he had killed someone in the other one because he wasn't this fluent speaker, amen, and hallelujah. And God said, hey, I made you that way. God said, I don't make mistakes. I made you that way. And that's what we got to get past is understanding that we don't have to be operate in low self-esteem because God made us that way. And if God can do it for Moses, if God can do it for Abraham, if God can do it for Isaac, if God can do it for Jacob, come on now, God can do it for you too. Amen. And if, hey, think about David. Think about David and, and all the things that David did. David was a, he, he was a murderer and he, he was an adulterer. Think about what David did. If God could do it for David, he could do it for you too. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. God can use us all. 
Glory to God. Glory to God. So we need to move away from this low self-esteem. So love, low self-esteem is this. It's always seeing yourself as a failure or less than those around you. Seeing yourself as a failure. You, you know, there are some things we don't always succeed at everything that we do. We don't always get it right in everything that we do. But that's just because we're trying. It doesn't mean that you're a failure. You may have failed at something, but that doesn't make you a failure. There's none of us that are perfect and we're going to fail at certain things. We're not going to always get it right. But that doesn't make you a failure, baby. You got to get back up. You got to rise back up and you got to go at it again. You got to try that thing again. And, and, and this time, maybe try it a different way. Amen and hallelujah. If you can think of numerous times that Bill Gates, he he failed at something. You can think of numerous times that, that Thomas Edison failed at something. You can think of numerous times that Martin Luther King failed at something. But baby, that doesn't make them a failure because they went on to do great things. And all I'm saying to you is move away from that low self-esteem and don't think you got to be perfect. And if you fail at one thing, that's not the end all. It doesn't matter where you start. It just matter where you finish. Baby, get back up and try it again. Glory to God. Glory to God. The other one that we run into is self-rejection. And self-rejection is not accepting yourself, always beating up on yourself, not happy with the person that God made you. That's called self-rejection. That's us just telling ourselves that you don't like who you are. You don't like how God has made you. You're not, you, you, you have something against you know, some of the things that you may have done or maybe the way you look is self-rejection. You are rejecting yourself and it's, it's enough rejection going on in this world. You don't need to complicate or add on to things by rejecting your own self. Amen. And hallelujah. you got to stand tall. You got to stand firm and you got to stand forthright and know that you are somebody that you are good and that God made you, amen and hallelujah, that you got a purpose, a plan and a will, and baby, that ain't meant for you to talk bad or put yourself down. It's enough of that going on. You got enough enemies in this world. You don't have to be your own enemy. Come on now, help me somebody. Another one is self-hatred, self-hatred, and that's hating the person who God made in you, considering yourself ugly, dumb, clumsy, etc. Right. That's that's who God made in you. Considering yourself ugly, dumb or clumsy. And that only comes when we compare ourselves to others, when we're comparing ourselves to someone else. And we say, I wish I could be like them. Or I wish I was as smart as them. or I wish I looked like they did or or I wish I had the athletic prowess as they had. No, baby, that, that's not what you want. You just want to be you. You don't want to be anyone else but you. Amen and hallelujah, because the plan and the will and the purpose that God has for you only fits you. It doesn't fit anyone else. And if you try to be someone else, if you try to to, to go out there and, and, and do something that's not for you or or be somebody that's not who you are, it just won't fit. It just won't fit. And you're going to end up having trouble and, and disappointment and, and and heartache and discouragement. And all of those things, you're just going to continue to be in this spiral of facing negativity. Amen. And hallelujah. All the Lord wants you to do is just be you. Just go out and be you each and every day. Operate in what the Lord has for you. You we all have gifts and talents. And the Lord said, operate in your gift and talent. Don't worry about someone else's gift or talent because their gift or talent doesn't fit you. And your gifts or talent doesn't fit them. Be who you are. Because the Lord made you who you are. Love who you are. And don't try and be somebody else. And don't, don't compare yourself to anyone else. When I wake up in the morning, I'm thankful that I am who I am. I say, Lord, I don't want to be anybody else but Jason Flowers. Because I know I can be the very best Jason Flowers I can be. But one thing I can't do, I can't go out here and be the very best Cedric Brown that I could be because I'm not him. I cannot go out here and be the very best Jay Tatum because I'm not her. I can only be me. And that's all I want to do is be me. I love me some me. Come on now. Come on now. I'm preaching to somebody today. Y'all better come get me today. The, the fourth one and the last one is unforgiveness or bitterness. So when a person 
continues to hold things against themselves, such as something in their past that was embarrassing, something that they did that was gross or what have you, or that they are still ashamed of, even after they have repented from it. And you all know what I'm talking about. There may be some choices or decisions that you've made in the past. Amen. And how there's some things that you're not proud of uh, that you did in the past. You may have said something about someone, treated someone in, in a disre disrespectful way, or you may have gone some places that you should not have gone. You may have been this person that, you know, the Lord didn't make you to be. Amen and hallelujah. But but that's that's what, what being in Christ is all about. Amen. It says, hey, you are no longer that person anymore. You are no longer that person. You are a new creature in Christ. You're a new creature in Christ. So all things have been passed away. You're a new creature in Christ. So all of those things that has happened in the past, they're in the past. And sure, they are part of your past. But baby, they don't make it who you are today. You got to leave that stuff in the past. Because you got a whole new future ahead of you in Christ. Amen and hallelujah. Glory to God. You got a whole new future in you in Christ. Don't worry about. You don't keep looking back in your rear view mirror of what you did, what you said. Because hey, we all have a past and, and there's some things and some choices and decisions that we've made in the past that none of us are proud of. Amen. And how, but that doesn't make it who you are today. You learn from those situations, but God has so much more for you. As long as you have breath in your body, then you ought to praise the Lord. And, and God has given you another chance. And, and God has said, hey, we can get this thing right, but you just got to trust in me. You got to believe in me. and You got to have faith in me. You got to follow me. But this there for you is there for the taking. It's there for the taking. So you got to for, forgive yourself. Forgive yourself. Don't hold no, no bitterness towards you. Forgive yourself because check this out, y'all. God has already forgiven you. You're already forgiven. And if the Lord has forgiven you, then you, why won't you just forgive yourself as well? It's already on the cross. It's already done. It's he already died. You can't die again. He can't come back and die again. He's already died for us. Amen and hallelujah. So let's get past all of that unforgiveness of ourselves and bitterness for our, of, of ourselves, some, some of the bad choices and decisions we made, it's gone. It's, you can't do nothing about that now. It, it's over with. It, you can't cry uh, over, over spilt milk. It's spilt. Amen and hallelujah. Only thing you can do is, you know, forgive yourself. Ask the Lord to forgive you and forgive yourself and know that the Lord has so much more planned for you. Hallelujah. Help me some body. In first John the 19, uh, first John one and nine, I'm sorry. First John one and nine, it says this, but if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. He's there to cleanse us from all wickedness, but we have to confess those sins. We have to give it to Jesus. We have to give it to him. Amen. And hallelujah. So being hard on yourself, always beating yourself up, Mentally, physically, emotionally and things of that nature, always seeing yourself as worthless or a pushing to, to reach some irrational goal just to feel good about yourself. You don't have to do that. All you got to do is confess your sins and know that by you confessing your sins, that God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. Learn how to love yourself. Amen and hallelujah. And, and here's is a story. The, the man who was tormented was one who tormented, who, who was tormented by the demons and he cut himself and threw himself in the fire. It's a story. You all can find it in the Bible. It's a story about this man who just continued to torment himself. And it's right there in Mark 9 and 22. Amen. It's in the, in the, in the, the book of Mark in chapter 9. And this is what it says in verse 22. It says the spirit often throws him into the fire, into water trying to kill him. Have mercy on us and help us if you can. It's the will of the devil to cause you to do harm to yourself. That's that's the devil, y'all. He wants us to do harm to ourselves. He wants us to feel make uh, for us to talk bad about ourselves, put ourselves down to to not forgive ourselves. It's the will of the devil. That's the spirit of the devil. Amen. Hallelujah. That's why I don't I don't like to hear people say bad things and negative things about themselves. That's not going to get you anywhere. That's not going to get you any. As a matter of fact, that's going to make you feel worse. 
that's going to keep you in this state of disappointment. That's going to keep you in this state of discouragement. It's going to keep you in this state of disheartedness. It's just going to keep you in this state of despair. And that's not where the, where God wants us to be. That's where the devil wants us to be, but that's not where God wants us to be. Amen. So feeling ugly or, or, or saying you're or stupid or seeing yourself as ugly or worthless or stupid or, or, or no good for nothing. That's not, that's not it. That's not it. Let's move away from that. Let's move away from that and start and start calling ourselves uh, uh, wonderfully and beautifully made. Start calling ourselves smart. Start calling ourselves pretty. Start calling ourselves uh, intelligent. Amen. And start calling ourselves. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. How about we just turn that around and start speaking positive on our situation? Start putting that positive out into the atmosphere and, and watch what happens. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Proverbs 9 and 8 says this. Whoever gets sense loves his own soul. And some some versions say whoever gets wisdom loves his own soul. He who keeps understanding will discover good. Amen. So this is what this is what God is essentially saying. in it. He says, if you give me your mess, I'm going to give you my mercy. Hallelujah. He says, if you give me your grumblings, I'm going to give you my grace. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He says, come on, Jesus. He said, if you're going to give me, if you give me your errors, I'm going to give you my eraser. He's going to make all that stuff go away. Glory to God. Come on, Jesus. He says, if you give me your sin, I'm going to give you my salvation. Come on now. Come on now. That's Jesus. Come on now, Jesus. You better give it to him, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Y'all better come get me. Y'all better come get me. This is a strong message on love and loving yourself. Amen and hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Help me somebody. And I'm going to close like this. I'm all done. We're about to get out of here. Uh, we're about to recognize some new members. And, and, and we're about to, I'm, I'm about to park this car. Amen. So Peter had to realize, you know, you, you go back in, in Peter and look in John 21. He's talking about Peter. You know, there was a time where Peter, uh, he denied Christ three times. Amen. And Peter felt so bad that he uh, denied Christ three times. Amen. He felt so bad about himself. He felt so bad about his ministry. He felt as though he let Jesus down. He felt terrible. His self-esteem was low. He had all of those things going. He just didn't feel good about himself at all. And Peter had to realize that if you love God, then you would be able to feed sheep because you see that God has forgiven and loved you. So God, so love yourself so that you can move with confidence that God has equipped you to love others. And this is what it says in John 21, 15 through 17. This is what it says. It says, when they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. Then it says, the third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time. Do you love me? He said. Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you, Jesus. And then Jesus said, feed my sheep. And at that point in time, y'all, no matter what Peter had done, he had denied Christ. He was feeling bad. He had low self-esteem. He had low confidence. He had all of these things, all these negative things he was feeling about himself. He was inside his own feelings. But that, at that point in time, at that moment, Jesus reinstated Peter. And I want you to know, my brothers and sisters, that Jesus will reinstate you also. So at the very end of the day, at the very end of the day, I'm going to go right back to where I started. First John 4 and 19. We love him because he first loved us. Amen and hallelujah. Now, after hearing this message, after hearing this teaching, after hearing this word from the Lord, now you have a right to say, I love me some me. Come on now. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Lord, for that word. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's our own time word right there. There's so many people who don't love themselves. There's so many people that beat themselves up on a continual basis each and every day. And the devil is just weighing you down and the devil has you down and, and you just don't love who you are. You don't love how you look. You don't love the things that you're doing in this world. But I'm here to share with you that God loves you. God loves you. He loves you so much that he sent his only begotten son to die on the cross so that we can have life. It says in the word, he sent his only begotten son that whosoever shall believe it in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. God loves you. And in the word says you have to love your neighbors as you love yourself. And you have to love you first before you can love your neighbor. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And there's someone out here underneath the sound of my voice who wants that love from God, who's, who's been away from God or don't know God, amen and hallelujah. And now is your time to be reconnected with God, to be reconciled to God, to have to accept the, the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Now is your time. And if that's you that's underneath the sound of my voice, just say this prayer with me. Just say this prayer with me, amen and hallelujah. Bow your heads and say this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, I confess that I am a sinner. I have sinned against you. I have ignored you. I've wanted to live life my way. But today I've heard the word of God. I'm asking you to forgive me of my sin. I do believe that Jesus death on the cross paid my sin debt in full. And I receive him as my personal savior and yield my life to you. It's in Jesus name we pray. Amen and hallelujah. And if you said that prayer and you said it from your heart, you are now part of God's family. Amen and hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. You are now part of God's family. Thank you, Lord. And the word says, if you confess with your mouth, part B, and if you believe in your, that you confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus, part B is, and you believe in your heart that he was raised from the dead, you will be saved. You're saved. Amen and hallelujah. Glory to God. And if that's you, I, all I want you to do is just give us a, a call here at the church or send us an email. We just want to come alongside of you. We just want to walk with you in your, your that commitment you just made, that important decisions you just made. We just want you to, to know that we're here for you. Uh, you can give us a call here at the church. Our number is 480-524-7080. Or you can always send us an email at transformationcommunitychurch1 at gmail.com. Calm. Amen and hallelujah. And there are some of you underneath the sound of my voice who do not have a church home. You're needing a church home. And I would love to be your pastor. Uh, everyone here at TCC and here in the sanctuary would love um, to be your church family. And if that's you underneath the sound of my voice that needs or want a church home, amen and hallelujah, then just feel free to give us a call here at 480 480- 524-7080, or you could always send us an email at transformationcommunitychurch1 at gmail.com. If that's you right here in the sanctuary, just raise your hand and we'll have our ministry team come over and, and, and embrace you and, and help you know how much we will love you here at TCC. And there are some of you underneath the sound of my voice that just need prayer. And we want to do that for you as well. We want to pray with you. We want to pray for you, uh, for the things that are going on in your life. You may have some important decisions you have to make. You have, may have uh, some health issues. Whatever that case may be, we want to pray with you and for you. Just give us a call here at the church at 480-524-7080 or just send us an email at transformationcommunitychurch1 at gmail.com. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. So now, family, it's time for the offering. Praise the Lord. It is time for the offering. Praise the Lord. And we have multiple ways to give here at TCC. One of those is through Cash App. That is dollar sign transformation AZ. We also have Venmo and that is at transformation AZ. Uh, another way we have is through uh, text to give and that is 844 893-3298. And for those of you that are at home uh, watching us online, you could always just send us a check or cash, place it in an envelope, and you'll see the address right there on screen. 
And for those of you in the sanctuary, just go ahead and put your your uh, your envelope in the tray that's being passed around. And we'll go through that one more time. We'll go through it one more time. So there's a cash app that is dollar sign transformation AZ. And then we have Venmo that is at transformation AZ. And then we have text to give and text to give is 844-893-3298. And then lastly, we have um, the traditional way or the standard way of putting a check or cash in the envelope. And just, uh, for those of you that are watching online, you'll see our address there on the screen. And for those of you in the sanctuary, just feel free to put your envelope in the tray being passed around. Amen and hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. And we just thank you, Lord, for all your many blessings that you bestow upon us here at Transformation Community Church here at TCC. Uh, you continue to bless us each and every week. And uh, for those of you that are watching online, even those in the sanctuary, we don't ask uh, for you to do anything special. We just ask you to give according to your heart's desire. Uh, you know what the Lord has placed in your heart to do, to give. And we just ask that you be obedient to what the Lord is asking you to do. Amen and hallelujah. And we're just so thankful and honored that whatever you give uh, to help us here is going to go to do the Lord's work. And the Lord is going to multiply it. He's going to give us everything that we need. He's going to provide all of, to us all the riches and glory in, in God's name that we can do exactly what it is he would have us to do. Amen and hallelujah. Amen and hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So now um, uh, announcements. Uh, we're right here at announcements. So from an announcement standpoint, we have a food pantry. Uh, if you know anyone that, that needs food or maybe you yourself, just give us a call here at the church. 480-524-7080. Uh, or just send us an email, transformationcommunitychurch1 at gmail.com. And we also have Winning Women Wednesday. That's every Wednesday. You'll hear a three to five minute devotional from Lady Renee. She's doing an awesome job, a super, super, super job of reaching people and sharing the word of God. Amen. And you can do that. You can listen to her every Wednesday, uh, a three to five minute devotional. And you can follow her on Instagram on uh, YouTube and on uh, Facebook, and that's at TCC Arizona. And then you can come back on Friday and just check me out, Friday Drill with Pastor Flowers. I do the same thing. I give a three to five minute devotion to help you get ready for your weekend, amen? And you can find that again on uh, YouTube, Instagram, and on Facebook, at TCC Arizona. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, glory to God. And now's the time for you to share that word. Uh, we've gone through the message. We've gone through the entire series on love. Show me the love. Today's message was I love me some me and share that message. Go out and share that message with someone, someone who's struggling on loving themselves, someone who is holding themselves in condemnation and not receiving the grace of God, someone who is always down on themselves and let them know that they can do it. They can do all things through Christ who gives them strength. Amen. And hallelujah, share this word and you can share the word again on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and also on our website. That, that website is transformationaz.com and you'll see all of that right there on your screen. Amen and hallelujah. So, so it's not good enough for you to hear it. It's more important that you hear it and equally important that you share it. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. So that's all I have, family. That's all I have. Thank you for your time today. Thank you for your time. Thank you for hanging there with us. And I know that you were blessed. I know that you were blessed and I know that you were blessed. So just stand to your feet and we're going to be dismissed. Stand to your feet. You're going, we're going to be dismissed. And just repeat after me. Uh, may the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord shine his face upon you and be gracious unto you. And may the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Just know that I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you from the bottom of my heart. Just know that Lady Renee loves you. She loves you from the bottom of her heart. Uh, just know that all of us here at TCC, and we're growing each and every week, all of us here at TCC love you. We have philia love. We, love, we have this deep Christian love for you. 
And we have that each and every day. We're praying for you each and every day. But here's what I want you to know, that God has agape love. That agape love is unconditional, is, is sacrificial, is perfect, is pure. God has agape love for you. And there's nothing better to, to have is God's love. It says in his word that God sent his only begotten son, that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. God loves you. Amen and hallelujah. So until this time next week, have a most favored week.